our guy in here, Michael Scoto from Hoops Hype. Michael, thanks so so much for hopping on the Insiders. How we doing, man? Hey, what's going on, fellas? My pleasure to join you guys. We have done so many things with lists during the course of this show. We've been on air for about a month and a half. We've done so many things with lists. And we're anti-list. We, we've decided we're anti-list. We are. We just, okay. I, but, but in the sense that, that and and you just recently did your your survey of of front office members and mm-hmm. and you put together answers from this survey that yeah. it's the reason James and I appreciate it even as list haters is because it's not just a random assortment of guys that you haphazardly throw in an order and you make the decisions on it you're actually asking people and getting down to kind of the nitty-gritty of of how to put these things in order and James and I really appreciate that I'm glad I mean look you know it's uh like so for uh the top breakout candidates list which your guy keegan murray got featured on one of the kings guys um i just you know give executives an opportunity give me three guys that you think are going to be a top breakout candidate for the year and the first guy gets five points second guy gets three and the third guy gets one and you total it up and uh you know that's what you get now what was interesting was Cade cunningham had more had the most uh first place votes from executives, but he didn't have the most total number. That went to Franz Wagner of uh, Orlando with the Magic. So interesting there um, in that regard, but I feel like it gives you a a little bit more of a well-rounded sense of like what executives overall are thinking. And uh, like the difference there was like Franz was on more total ballots and accumulated more points than anybody. Um, so there's different ways to, to move up on the list, but one executive did put Keegan Murray as his personal top choice to be the top breakout candidate. So everybody has a different opinion. It's fascinating to see and compile all of it. Yeah. See, that's the biggest thing. I think compile all of it. You do a really good job of, of looking at things objectively, giving a question out to people who, who are in the know and then building something that, that looks structured and reasonable. Uh, you know, again, we're looking at things like, the ESPN top 100 and just the mm-hmm. arbitrary putting Demonis Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox next to each other, no matter what, because they can't choose, you know, right. to put them separately or that they'll put Tyrese Halliburton at number 21, one spot be- before both of them. And you're just thinking, is that really how your voting went that he just randomly ended up right next to them? So what I appreciate about your list is uh-huh. that, uh, that you're, you're really like looking at, players like Keegan and like, how can they, they get there? How can they get there? And, and giving like some people who should know these things about how they would uh, gauge him. When you, uh, did you get any feedback while you were doing this about why people might think that Keegan Murray is, is in line for a breakout candidacy? Well, from the one exec that told me he had him as his top breakout candidate, he thought he could have a ceiling of being, at best, Sacramento's second best scorer, which I respectfully, when we were going back and forth, I didn't agree with. I think the the train is running through the two all NBA guys and Demonis Sabonis and, and De'Aaron Fox, and that Keegan. I think there's room for his scoring to go up, and I mean he could stay a forty percent three point shooter, which is really his best uh, calling card right now as a youngster in the league. Um, you know. If he's going to score more, who's taking a step back? Is it Harrison Barnes? I just don't think it's the top, you know, the two all NBA guys coming off of last year. Those are your go to guys and those are your horses. Um, So to me, that was uh, what I was saying was I think he's going to take a step forward. I just think his ceiling is going to be capped at this point because they brought back Barnes, Um, you know, Malik Monk and Kevin Herter return. These are all guys that can score. Um, on a nightly basis. And and it's one of the reasons why Mike Brown has one of the best offenses in the league. Um, but what's good about Keegan is he, as a rookie, he's an older guy a little bit, um, played a couple of years in college, and he knows his role. And he does it effectively as kind of that stretch forward for Sacramento to make the offense click. Is there any concern for you as we talk to Michael Scotto from Hoops Hype? Is there any concern to you that that could potentially cap Keegan Murray's ceiling long term? Well, I think eventually he's going to be a guy that can score maybe in the high teens um, on a really good 
you know, top four caliber team in, in the West, you know, maybe, maybe Barnes takes a step back. Maybe they trade Barnes down the line. Again, that's just an opinion. I know the aggregators will, will eat that up. Um, but you know, you never know, like if they need some financial flexibility, but I think Keegan's got room to grow. I think for him, the growth though is, you know, he's a pretty good three point shooter as it is. Um, it's just getting more shots. And I think defensively maybe increasing his rebounding a little bit um, for Sacramento um, to make him uh, a more overall well-rounded player, which is something I'm sure he wants to do. Um, but th- th- those would be my areas of improvement for him going into this season with the expectations that Sacramento has um, to build off of last year when they ended the playoff drought. We are talking to Michael Scotto here on the Insiders, of course, from Hoops Hype. Uh, Michael, you wrote this really intriguing article about the top 50 players, uh, the the highest, I guess, grossing NBA players in history who have mm-hmm. not made an all-star team. And yeah. first of all, I think it's a great concept because this is something you can track. And like we talk about lists uh, in, in a negative way, but this is something where you literally are just going down and, and showing how much guys have made. Was there any like crazy surprises to you? I mean, again, we're Tobias Harris, by the time he's done with this season, will have made a quarter of a billion dollars in the NBA without ever yeah. making an all-star team. Uh, Harrison Barnes will probably finish in the top two or three all time yeah. as of right now. Uh, players who have not made an all-star team this sort of far as how much they've made. But was there anything that stood out to you when you're doing your uh, compiling your research for this? Sure. I think, well, the first thing would be some of these guys are really good and I was surprised they didn't make an all-star team, but you know, like by the end of his career, Danilo Gallinari can also eclipse potentially the $200 million grossing mark. Um, uh, the other ones that really stuck out to me, I, I was always amazed that CJ McCollum never made an all-star team. I thought when he first got to the Pelicans, um, the way he was playing before he got hurt, he would have had a shot that year, but um, for whatever reason, it, it hasn't uh, materialized for CJ and, and he and Dame Lillard for, you know, I think it was almost like eight years or so or uh, them and uh, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry with two of the top scoring backcourts in the West for a long time. So that that was a little surprising. Um, you know, you mentioned Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes was a guy that coming out of high school and going to North Carolina had so much hype. Um, around his game, and he's become a, a solid starting caliber player. But I think the ceiling that he had, the many thought that he had when he was a youngster in high school and maybe at the start of Carolina, uh, it, it didn't materialize. But he still had a great career um, overall. Other guys that stuck out to me, um, I think Al Jefferson stuck out to me a little bit because he was a guy that averaged 20 and 10. And the crazy thing about Al that I don't think um, people realize, he earned an All-NBA selection, but he wasn't an All-Star one year. I know he played on bad teams, but um, that was interesting to me, the discrepancy of, well, you made an All-NBA team, but you didn't make an All-Star team. Um, So filtering that out, I thought was interesting. And, you know, a lot of the financial uh, tracking, thankfully, was helped in large part to our hoops hype salary database, which uh, goes back many years. And I think the interesting thing is you look at this list now, give it a few years when the cap goes up, these numbers are going to seem minuscule comparatively. Um, So, you know, I think, I think the the lesson here is we all chose the wrong profession. Uh, We should have been NBA pro basketball players. You know, I think that's what the lesson is here. A lot of GMs and, and, and former players tell me that. They're like, what? You didn't play? Yeah. I thought for sure. <laughs> no, we're talking about Michael Scotto from Hoops Hype. You mentioned a couple answers ago, you were talking about how, how there are expectations now for the Kings. Yeah. They have, they have snapped their playoff drought. What's your expectation for Sacramento this year? Just your, your personal one. I mean, I think certainly if um, they hit their ceiling, they could be a top four team in the West. I think one thing that's of note from last year for the majority of the season they were pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not always a given in the NBA. And incremental linear growth in the NBA does not always happen. Um, I think for Sacramento, they took good strides last year. I like how Mike Brown, their coach, is 
um, embracing, um, trying to put almost like championship expectations for them. I don't know if they're there, but I can certainly see them doing better than they did last year, I think. The thing about the West that's interesting, by the time you get to the end of the regular season, it's all about the standings that are separated by, I don't know, a game, two, And it's all matchup driven. If you get uh, a bad matchup, like look at the East, for example. Uh, Miami had to be one of the toughest eight seeds, and look how far they went. So to me, it's all about matchups, especially in the West where it's so uh, contentious. And teams are pretty evenly uh, dispersed throughout the conference. Um, you know, I think Keegan Murray's growth is going to play a huge part in that. Can they get um, some new contributions from Sasha and some of the guys that are returning? Um, you know, Malik Monk was good for them last year. I, I really don't know how much more Sabonis and Fox, like, can take another step because they were already all NBA guys. Um so the growth is going to have to come, in my opinion, from Keegan Murray, uh, continued maybe a little bit of step, maybe in efficiency from Harrison Barnes. But overall, continuity and chemistry-wise, they have a shot to certainly advance past the first round further than they did last year. And I really think make potential noise in the Western Conference as long as they stay healthy, knock on wood. All right, we are talking to Michael Scotto from Hoops Hype. Hey, I we can't keep you all day. Uh, you got a game to get to, right? Um, I am. I'm going to the uh, Brooklyn Nets game coming up for preseason. I usually, so since I'm in, I'm based in Brooklyn, so I'm usually going to a lot of the, the Knicks and the Nets uh, home games, which it's cool to have like two teams here, but certainly today uh, be interesting for sure. Yeah. For sure. It, interesting. They're, they're playing, uh, what is it? Raw Nana, uh, which is. Uh, Macabre, is yeah. Oh, Maccabee, excuse me. Oh, is that you there? Okay, yeah, it's got yeah. Uh, someone else for them tonight on on where I'm looking at. Um, but there's uh, heightened security. Is it, it might be a little bit of a of a strange night to you with all that's going on uh, in, mm -hmm. in Israel and, and everything else. So be safe out there. But also, like, is there anything that you're uh, looking forward to in this game? You know, it's always interesting to me to see any team that's coming from another league, going up against an NBA team. This is like an open tryout, basically, for all those guys, and I, I expect them to play hard. For the Nets in particular, a couple things. I mean, one, uh, I think Nick Claxton is one of the rising centers in the league, and he is going to get paid uh, in the summer of 2024. Um, when I asked Spencer Dinwiddie about it at Media Day, he said he thinks he could be a $100 million player, potentially. And – given the money that Jared Allen got a couple of years ago, you know, it was like, I think it was what five for a hundred or something like that. You know, could that be in Nick Claxton's future um, with the way yeah. the cap is going up time will tell, but he felt robbed of not being an all defensive team selection last year. So um, I'm curious to see that. I think Ben Simmons looks healthy. I watching him last year, Looked like a guy that was laboring a little bit, especially on a dunk. Like he could barely last year, I feel, get over the rim at certain points. And this year, the explosion is there. Um, he even took a mid range shot during a game, which, um, you know, for people, whoa, <laughs> you know, I, I, and I've seen him in pregame warm up and shoot corner threes. It would not shock me if, um, on a leap year, he pulled one out uh, for Brooklyn and pulled a corner three maybe, but occasionally, not not a lot. But his explosion looks to be back. Um, and I think for Mikhail Bridges, if he hits his ceiling this year, this could be a guy, if you look at the numbers last year when he was around 25, 5, and 5 or so, maybe less with the assists, excuse me, but his efficiency with Brooklyn um, – was kind of staggering considering the volume and the usage rate that went up after the trade from Phoenix. I think Mikhail Bridges, um, depending on where the Nets finish by the time all-star voting takes place, I think Mikhail Bridges has a chance to be an all-star for the first time. And he's been an all-defensive guy before. He wants to get back to that. So I'm looking for that. And lastly, um, Spencer Dinwiddie in a contract year. 
playing off the ball with Ben Simmons. I'm I'm looking forward to that because he did it with Luka Doncic in Dallas. And I think, you know, it reminds – this team reminds me a little bit in different aspects of the Kenny Atkinson era Nets when they were the sixth seed. I think um, they're scrappy. They're going to have to be. They're going to have to, you know, score as a team. They don't have – I know Mikhail can drop 25, but he's not your traditional um, – go-to guy that you would think of uh, across the league, but he's shown that he can do it. Um, so I think for the Nets, there's a lot of entry defensively. Um, they've got a bunch of guys that are um, switchable guys and they got Lord knows the entire league knows that they have a ton of depth when it comes to wing players. So whoever gets squeezed out of that rotation, other teams are going to be looking at there, There's a lot to me to look at with the Nets and, um, going into the into the new year ahead and at least at Barclays Center home uh wise locally it starts tonight. Michael, this was really terrific. Thank you so much for hopping on with uh with James and myself. We really appreciate it. Hoopshype.com is the website. You can check yep. out the top 50 players and never make an all-star team. You can talk you can check out his uh his front office survey. Really, really good stuff over there at Hoopshype. Really appreciate all your work, Michael. Tell, so tell Harry tell Harry Giles we said hi. You know, wait, James, real quick, just because you did mention Harry. Um, you know, what a what a potential story here for Harry Giles. This is a guy that if you watched him in high school, I mean, obviously a lot of people watch a lot of mixtapes, but this guy was one of the top high school recruits all time and unfortunately dealt with some serious injuries. But, um, boy, you know, his spirit is is really up there. Amazing. and um I'm looking forward to see how he looks physically. Um, he's he's gotten some preseason minutes with the Nets. Um, you know, Dayron Sharp, the last game got uh, hurt, so you know maybe it'll give him an opportunity to have an expanded chance to make the roster. You know, he's fighting with guys like Darius Baisley um, and also Trendon Watford, who played for Portland. I'm sure you guys saw him out on the West Coast uh, a little bit last year. So um, Harry's Harry's a good kid and. Um, you know, looking forward to seeing what he can bring. And um, it would be a nice comeback story if uh, if he can make the vision a reality and, and make the Brooklyn Nets this year. I agree. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I'd love to see that for him. Michael, thank you so much, man. You got it, fellas. Thanks. My pleasure.